Hi everyone, today we're diving into a street photography technique that might seem a little bit unorthodox, and that's shooting from the hip. Now, for those unfamiliar, it basically means holding your camera at waist level and snapping photos without looking through the viewfinder. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking, isn't that a recipe for disaster? Well, not necessarily. There's a certain charm and a practicality to shooting from the hip, especially for us introverted street photographers. The main draw for me is discretion. Let's face it, shoving a camera in someone's face isn't exactly conducive to capturing those candid moments we might be seeking. See, with the traditional approach, when you raise your camera to look through the viewfinder, people typically notice, leading to awkward smiles, or even worse, those raised eyebrows. Shooting from the hip allows you to blend in with the crowd capturing those fleeting expressions and those interactions without causing a scene. And when you get those candid moments from a low angle, they often translate to more dynamic photos. You get a different view of the world, which creates a sense of rawness and energy that you can't just replicate through a posed photograph. Plus, it forces you to focus on the faces, the expressions and the stories people carry in their eyes, rather than just the back of someone's head, which, let's face it, isn't all that interesting. But there's a catch. Mastering this technique takes practice and a lot of it. Blurry images and missed compositions are all part of the course when you're starting out. But this is about capturing the moment, not award-winning compositions. Technically, there are a few things you can do to increase your odds of success. First, focus is crucial. If your camera has lighting fast autofocus, you might be able to rely on that. But for most of us, zonal focusing is the way to go. You basically preset your focus to a specific distance, like three to five feet, and anything within that range should be reasonably sharp. It's a whole technique and practice learning in itself. Aperture priority mode is your friend here, and you want to set that to around f8 or f11 and this will give you a little bit of depth of field, but mostly it will increase that vocal range where you can capture your subject, increasing your odds of them being sharp. What my camera also allows me to do is set a minimum shutter speed, and I put that at around 1 250th of a second. So people will generally be sharp and blur is less of an issue. As for holding the camera, I like to hold it with my thumb on the shutter release button, which for me makes it a little bit more discreet and it's comfortable. If you have your finger on the top, like where it would be traditionally, then people are more likely to be aware that you are taking a photograph. But it is totally up to you whichever way feels comfortable. In terms of straps, usually I like to wear a wrist strap and I find it less restrictive than a neck strap would be and it's more comfortable around my hand. I know some people do like to wrap their neck straps around, they might hold it like this. It's personal preference, but I would recommend something to secure it. Now for the actual shooting. There are two schools of thought here. If you can be patient, you can practice at home on stationary objects. I find the best practice ground is the streets itself. Embrace the spray and pray method and digital cameras are really your friend here. Take lots of photos, use the high drive mode if you have it and you're bound to get some keepers. The other option is the selective approach where you wait for that perfect moment to fire away and this requires more patience and a good sense of anticipation but the payoff can be incredible. So I would recommend starting with the spray and pray, get comfortable holding the camera in this position and taking shots and getting an idea of distance and then progress on to selective method. Ultimately, shooting from the hip isn't for everyone, but if you're looking for a way to capture candid moments, add a touch of rawness to your street photography and maybe avoid a few awkward confrontations, then give it a try.